you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this evening. We'll give you praise. We thank you for everyone connected to this broadcast from around the world. We pray that your word will comfort. Thank you, Father. Amen. You can take your seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And today we'll be sharing on praying the answer. That's what we'll be looking at today. Praying the answer. Hallelujah. Prayer becomes effective when we know the will of God. Understanding the will of God will determine your attitude towards prayer. This is very, very important. Understanding the will of God will determine your attitude towards prayer. Your conversation in the place of prayer is directly related to the knowledge of God's word you have. Your conversation in the place of prayer. You know, you, you know children when they are properly raised up and you can also tell when a person is not properly raised up. They may have been full grown adults but you could see foul language, their attitude and then you will know this fellow was not properly developed. And sometimes people think that if you have college degree, uh, that you are well developed, but that's not true. When it comes to character, there is a place of accepting responsibility when it comes to character. So, if your prayer is going to be effective, it's going to be as a result of the knowledge of God's word you have. The knowledge of God's word you have. You see, I was talking to a friend that said, you know, several years ago, there are things we are not aware of, but as we learn the word of God, we know what to do. Prayer becomes effective when the knowledge of the will of God takes the center stage of your conversation. I said prayer becomes effective when the knowledge of the will of God takes the center stage of your communication. The knowledge of the will of God. Because without the knowledge of God's will, we pray and miss. You know, when we talk about someone is praying, but he prayed and missed, he didn't pray in line, he didn't pray according to his will, it's because they lack the knowledge of his will. In Second Timothy, when Paul was writing, he talked to Timothy, he said, study to show yourself approved to God. Now, the reason why he said study is that in the course of study, you have exposure, which is very important, that you will rightly divide. You cannot rightly divide when you don't know. You can divide it wrongly. If, if it can be rightly being divided, it can also be wrongly divided. And there are so many people being oppressed because they lack the knowledge of his will concerning what they are going through. You know, it is good to pray for people, but I often say this, it is also better for you to have faith for yourself. Because a lot of people, you can depend on people's faith for a very long time. You can depend on the faith of others for a long time. You need to develop your own faith to receive from God. And if your faith is going to develop, that simply means you have the responsibility to learn God's word. So today we're teaching on praying the answer. So whenever you're facing a situation, there are key things I want you to look at for. No situation is greater than God's word. No situation. It doesn't matter whether it's a financial situation, a health situation, a relationship situation. No situation in the natural that is greater than God's word. But you see, our attitude towards God's word may not be consistent with his will, with the will of God, because we may have this attitude of not valuing the word of God. We think that there are other sources that can help us solve this problem. We we'll think that if we go here, we we'll go there, we we'll can solve the problem. But the word of God actually is the answer. You see, how you relate with God's word will determine how you use God's word. How you relate with the word of God. How you value the word. You know, in Psalm 107 verse 20, it said, He sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The word went forth. Because the word contains the energy of God. It contains the life of God. The word went forth 
and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. So what delivers people from destruction is the word. If I don't have God's word, I am bound to destruction. If I don't have God's word in my spirit, I can't escape oppression. You can be educated in natural things, but if you're not educated in spiritual things, you can't escape oppression. If you're educated, if you only depend on education you got from Harvard or one of the best schools around the world, and you don't educate yourself in the things of the spirit, my friend, demons will beat you up. Demons will mess up your life. And this is why you can say, this man is a professor. This man is very intelligent. But why did he commit suicide? Because life is spiritual and it takes spiritual knowledge to decide the quality of life you're going to have. It takes spiritual knowledge to decide the quality of life you're going to have. Some people are offended at others. I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with that. Whatever you are not happy with, there is something God's word has said about it. And the question right now is, do you have a knowledge of what God's word has said concerning this situation? You see, your boldness comes from knowledge. I said, your boldness comes from knowledge. Your boldness comes from knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge of God's word, you can't be bold. And when we talk about confidence in dealing with situation, it's as a result of knowledge. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, it said, my people are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. The kind of knowledge he's talking about there is revelation knowledge. My people are, de are destroyed because they lack the revelation of my will. They lack the revelation of who I am to them. They lack the revelation of who they are. You see, this is why I said, if you don't know who you are in Christ, you don't know what you have in Christ, you don't know what you can do with the Christ in you, you cannot truly enjoy your redemption realities. You can't enjoy it. You may be born again, yes, but you cannot live the God life. You cannot enjoy the God life. You always say, oh, the enemy is attacking me, the enemy is doing this. People say that when they are not in the arena of knowledge. They, when people are not in the arena of the revelation knowledge of God's word, the, the tendency to say the enemy has done this, they magnify the enemy in their thoughts, they magnify the enemy in their conversation, they magnify the enemy with their action, and then they, they, they get frustrated by the fruit of their action. They get frustrated by the fruit of their action. That was why when Jesus was right, was sharing in John Gospel chapter 15, verse 3, he said, Ye are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. Now, if the word cleans, that simply means that word is needed in prayer. That's what we should pray. We should pray the word. What we should pray is the word of God. And prayer becomes effective when God's word is what you're praying. I said, prayer becomes effective. If God's word is what you are praying as a person, prayer becomes effective when you pray the word of God. Because if you're not praying God's word, it simply means you're not praying according to his will. When pray according to his will, when that prayer is born out of the word of God. And also we need to understand that when it comes to God's word, we'll have the old covenant, we'll have the new covenant. Our knowledge of the both covenant will determine our prayer life. This is important. Our knowledge of the both covenant will determine how we pray. You know, the old covenant is a shadow of good things to come, not the very image. The old covenant, according to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, is a shadow of good things to come, not the very image. Now, there are Christians who have what the, the old covenant mentality towards life. They have the old covenant mentality towards life. There are certain prayers, let's say, for instance, someone that said, Oh Lord, arise, let your enemies be scattered. Now, our dispensation, the testament in which we operate, we don't need God to arise because by Jesus, He has risen already. You know, so we need to come from that understanding. So for me to say, Oh God, arise, let my enemies be scattered, let the enemies be scattered. Now, that is not His will. His will is that I enforce my dominion. I do what? I enforce my dominion. I cannot truly enforce my dominion when I have a pity attitude, a defeat attitude. So we need to understand the difference between some of the Psalms. There are Psalms that we'll read that is not consistent with the new covenant. And there are Psalms we'll read that is consistent with the new covenant. Hallelujah. There are, gen there are scriptures in Genesis we'll read that is consistent with the new covenant and there are scriptures that are not consistent with the new covenant. So we need to know 
where we are, who we are, what we have, and that will determine how we pray. There are how some church people pray today, they pray like magicians. I'm sorry to say that. There are how some Christians pray today, you know that that prayer is a fear-based prayer. They are not praying according to the word of God. They are praying from experience. You don't pray from experience. You pray from revelation. And revelation must be consistent. Every revelation will receive. We have taught it in this place several times. That every revelation you receive must be consistent with the person of Jesus and his finished work. That is the perfect picture. That is the perfect picture. The person of Jesus and his finished work should be the foundation for your prayers. Should be the foundation for your prayers. You cannot truly be successful in your prayer life when your knowledge of God's word is not consistent with the present will of God. You cannot. And this is where a lot of people get frustrated. But I have been praying. I have been praying. The question is, what are they praying? What is the content of the prayer? Are they praying from the knowledge of their redemption? Are they praying from the knowledge of who they are? What they have? There are things we don't have to pray for because we have them already. There are things we have to exercise authority over, not to pray about them. We should understand what to pray for and what we have to exercise authority over. If you look at the scripture in the book of Acts, when the Peter and John look at the man and say, Siva and go, none I have, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. A command was released. A command was released. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So we should be able to know what we are praying and for your prayer to be effective, like you rightly said, you need to have the knowledge of the will of God. Now, someone may be going through some financial challenges, maybe in your job, in maybe in your relationship, and there are all kinds of challenges they are going through. And there are certain situations we, we go through in life. It's not God's will for us, but we can go through those situations because we are ignorant of what God's will teach. Remember this. People can go through things that they are not supposed to be going through. People can go through an experience and somebody can say, but this lady is a Christian, but this man is a believer. But the experience they are going through is not in line with who they are in Christ. But because of lack of knowledge of God's word, that experience has prevailed because the strength of the enemy is in the area where you're ignorant of God's word. I want to say that again. I said the strength of the enemy is in the area where your ignorance of God's word. The area where your ignorance of God's word is the area where you're going to be oppressed. Any area where your ignorance of God's word, you can't escape oppression in that area. That is the area where people are being oppressed. So when people don't have the mentality of who they are in Christ Jesus, it will show in their prayers. So God wants you to see prayer as an opportunity to speak his word. I want to say that again. I say God wants you to see prayer as an opportunity to speak his word. To bring him to, to speak his word as an opportunity to speak the word of God. What happens when we have the knowledge of his word? I like to, there are key things I want to look at today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lamb of God. Okay, I'd like us to look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Colossians. Thank you, Jesus. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, look at this. It said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. We do not do what? We do not do what? We do not cease to pray for you, for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Look at that. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. You might be filled with what? With the knowledge of his will. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Do you know that the knowledge of his will is the reason for being wise? You become a wise believer when you have the knowledge of his will. Lack of the knowledge of his will can lead to the manifestation of foolishness. Lack of the knowledge of his will. He said that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will because the knowledge of his will is the foundation of faith. The foundation of faith is the knowledge of his will. The foundation of faith because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. So if I hear God's word, faith rises in my heart. So he said that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. You have to be a when it comes to God's word. 
Why did I use that word aggressive? Because it will become uh, dominant, passive. It will become people who are not uh, willing to go after the word of God. You know, I, I was watching something some few days back and uh, like a crocodile, uh, 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 you know, was after a particular kind of animal, I'm trying to remember right now, and he had the tail of it. And no matter how this animal was trying to move, it was quite challenging. They tried. The animal was big. I'm trying to remember the name right now. I've forgotten. You know, it was so big. But the crocodile was holding the tail. Had the tail. It, it would try and move, but it couldn't move. You know what was happening? Spiritually, that's what happened to most people. They may look big in their inheritance, but they don't walk in the fullness of it. They don't walk in the fullness of it. They don't walk in the fullness of what God has for them. And so when Paul was writing here, he took carefully and said, he said, for this cause we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to decide that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Prayer is not yours. I want to make it clear. I said what? Prayer it's not tears. Prayer is not a place where you just start crying, crying. Tears will not solve the problem. You know, you think that maybe when we go to God, oh God, why am I going through this? Oh God, why am I going through this? Oh God, that's not prayer. That's not prayer. You have, the person is not praying. Oh God, why has this come upon me? Oh God, why have you allowed this to happen to me? Oh God, why am I going through this? The person is complaining. He's not praying. Because through prayer... Is the communication of God's word. I said, what true prayer is what is the communication of God's word. You are standing on the truth of God's word and you are saying, let it be so. You are saying, let it be so. Let it happen this way. Because if you allow your emotion, then you're going to lose out. Because what the enemy wants to do is that you become so emotional about what you're going through that you lose focus of the truth that will liberate you. That was why Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So freedom doesn't come by tears. It comes by the application of truth. And that application also is in the place of prayer. You will know the truth. And what is the truth here? It said that here might be filled with the knowledge of his will. There is something that happens to a person that have the knowledge of his will. There is how you think. There is how you look at situation. There is how you look at life. There is how you look at things. You, you don't look at things from a point of defeat. You don't look at situations from a point of defeat and say, Oh, I don't know how this is going to happen to me. You don't look at situations from a point of defeat because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And because we are the righteousness of God, that the knowledge of that righteousness is important in the place of prayer. And when someone said, Oh God, you know I'm not worthy. God, you know I'm not qualified. God, you know, let me say this to you. When people lack the knowledge of their righteousness, it becomes difficult for them to enjoy good relationship with God. Because there is what is also called spiritual low self-esteem. There are those who struggle with condemnation, who struggle with doubt, who struggle with not being able to believe who they are in Christ. They don't believe who they are in Christ. They prefer to believe what they feel than what is true. They prefer to believe what they see than to believe what God's word of text said. They prefer to believe all of those things. But God wants you to believe his word. He wants his word to be the foundation for your prayers. So when you go to, the, to a place of prayer, maybe you're dealing with any situation, the first thing is to know what have God's word said about this. The knowledge of the will of God will produce boldness in the place of prayer. The knowledge of the will of God will produce boldness in the place of prayer. You are bold. And boldness is the reason for right expectation. Because when you're bold, you know what you're expecting. You know this is going to turn out to my good. You know it's going to work out for me. I'm not scared of what the situation is. I'm not scared of what is happening. I'm not scared. Come on, somebody say I'm not scared. Hallelujah. I'm not scared of what is happening. I'm not scared of what they said because the, his will for my life is greater than whatever that is happening around me. Hallelujah. Look at what, look at Psalm 27. I want to give you a picture of what I'm trying to show here. In Psalm 27, this is some of the Psalm of David. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. 
This is the kind of psalm that we can call New Testament. <laughs> he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Come on. Whom shall I fear? What shall I fear? Nothing. Because the Lord is my light and salvation. My future is secured. My future is protected. My destiny is secured. Whom shall I fear? What? Nothing. The Lord is my light and salvation. This expression comes from a man that has the revelation of the will of God. A man in the flesh can speak this way. A man in the flesh can speak from this perspective. This man is a man of the spirit. And he said here, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my, the Lord is the strength of my life. You know, this man has anchored himself in God. This is why he's not going to fail. This is why no matter what happens in business, this man will rise. This is why the economy can't sing people like this. Uh, his conversation is not coming from where he was. His conversation came from the spirit man. He knew that this is who I am. God wants you to speak this way. This is how to speak. This is how the righteousness of God will talk. This is how the sons of God will speak. He said, the Lord is the is my life. I'm not going to walk in darkness. Kayababa. I will not walk in financial darkness. I will not struggle with life. The Lord is the light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Nobody. Nobody. Ah. <laughs> uh, now the song we used to sing many years ago, they said, who can bet you with the Lord? <laughs> you remember? Well, I said nobody. I said nobody. <laughs> you know, in the old school, we sang this kind of song, but listen to this, watch this. It said, the Lord is my light. God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. You see, this kind of expression is what opens up for supernatural increase. This is the kind of expression that leads to the manifestation of victory. This is the kind of confession that leads to spiritual boldness. When you hear some people talk, you know they're already defeated. When you hear their conversation, you know they're losing their mind. You know things are working against them. When you hear the way they are talking, you know life is hitting them. You know they are allowing what they are going through to determine their conversation. What you're going through is subject to your words. What you're going through, whatever it may be, whether it has to do with your finance, it has to do with your job, it is still subject to the word of God. Look at how David spoke here. This man was not born again, but he spoke like a superman. He spoke like a born again man. He spoke like a man of the spirit. Hallelujah. He spoke like a man with an understanding. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Look at this man. Look at this man. I'm not afraid. It is only men of the spirit that speak from this angle. It's only men who are, and look at what he said in verse 3. He said, and when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. This man understood who he was. He said when they came, they fell. He wasn't worrying about them. Because the Lord has become his light. The Lord has become his salvation. The Lord has become his strength. So he, he's no more afraid of them. Can I say this to you? Fear of any form is not in line with God's way for your life. Fear of any form. Whether the fear of the future. The fear of what is life going to be. And let me say this to you. One of the ways you flush fear out of your mind is by consistent hearing of God's word. The more you hear the word of God because fear comes to intimidate and that intimidation is what leads to frustration. Fear comes to intimidate. You look at the project, how much you are hard. Then you change your words. You're not speaking according to God's word. You're not speaking according to how you feel. No, fear comes to intimidate. And he said, who shall I fear? Because David needed to say this for him to walk in boldness. He needed to say this. I look at verse 3. He said, although an horse should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Look at this. Although the horse will encamp against
against me. He said, my heart shall not fear. Although war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. Where will he be confident? In God. Hallelujah. In God. Although war break out. Although they came against me. This man understood what was available to him. Your knowledge of God's will will secure you from deception, will secure you from limitation, will secure you from struggle. Your knowledge of God's will will secure you from deception. It will also secure you from limitation. It will secure you from any form of pain. The knowledge of God's will. There will be something that happens to a person who operates from the knowledge of the will of God. Amazing thing happens to this person. Because he operates from the knowledge of the will of God. Can I say this to you? The enemy is not as powerful as being presented. The strength of the enemy is in intimidation. I want to tell you how Satan operates. The strength of the enemy is in what? It's in intimidation. It's in fear and manipulation and lies and deception. This is what he would do. He makes you to be afraid. For no reason you're afraid. But you don't know why you're afraid. For no reason you're worried. But you don't know why you're worried. For no reason you're troubled. But you don't know why you're troubled. And this is why consistent hearing of God's word helps you to stay strong in the flow. Consistent hearing. Of God's word. I can't drive without hearing the word of God. That car has been loaded with materials. I can't drive without hearing God's word. As I drive, I listen. I listen. I listen. There are messages I've listened for more than five years. There are messages I have for, that have stayed with me for more than seven years. There are things I've listened to for over close to ten years. Listening. The word of God does not expire. It inspires. It will not expire. It will inspire you. So when someone says this message is an old message, why do you call it old? If you just put slot it in and listen to it, something amazing will break out in your spirit. And there are things you thought you heard, but you never heard it. Then the light came in it and they said, wow, I never saw it in this light. I never saw it in... Because sometimes you can read the Bible and, and bypass some things you never saw it. You know, you didn't see it. You thought you saw it, but you never saw it. And this is why we need to depend on the Holy Ghost as we can consistently receive inspiration and revelation to flow in the things of the Spirit. So today we're teaching on praying the answer. So well, the first thing we establish here is when you have a situation, when you have anything that you're trying to deal with, the first thing is to know what God's word has said about it. Know what God's word. That is going to be the basis for your faith. That is going to be the basis for your thinking. That is going to be the basis for your conversation. Knowing what God's word have said about it. This is what God's word have said about this. I, I lay hold. I lay hold. When you lay hold of what God's word has said about it, you operate in extraordinary confidence. You are not bothered. It doesn't matter what the deadline is. No matter what the deadline is, you know what God's word I've said already. So you're not scared of the deadline. We're not worried about the deadline. No matter what the deadline is, I trust God. No matter what they said about it, God is my source. Like the psalmist who said, look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help come from God. I look, I'm looking. Like Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 said, looking unto Jesus. Because if you consistently keep your eyes on him, you will lose your place. You will lose your inheritance. You will lose your future. Can I say this to you? Worrying about it won't solve the problem. But trusting God, it, trusting God's word is the doorway to spiritual stability, key to right expectation, and key to stable faith. So if my faith is going to be stable, it's because there is a word of God in me. And he said here, when, when David was talking in Psalm 27, I read that today, and I said, powerful. What a powerful way. A man spoke about his life. When we pray the word, we are enforcing the will of God. When we pray the word, what are we doing? We are enforcing the will of God. We are saying, let his will happen. 
let his will come to pass. You know why so many people are discouraged? They are discouraged because they are looking at the natural. They are discouraged because they are looking at the natural. They look at the natural. Oh, I don't have this. Oh, I don't have that. I don't know what to do. They look at the natural. No, we're not to look at the natural. We're to look at God's word. The word of God is our resources for our journey. I said the word of God is the resources for our journey. So whatever God has called you to do, he expects you to function from his word. I said no matter what God has called you to do, he expects you to function from his word. And he said, knowing what God's word has said about the situation will lead to faith for supernatural exploits. The faith for supernatural exploits will come from the knowledge of his will. And the next thing is, continue in the knowledge of his word concerning the situation. You know, sometimes you're praying the word of God concerning the situation, but it looks like there is still a resistance. <laughs> it looks like you're, you're speaking the word of God, but you're not seeing the feedback. You're not getting the right results. What are you supposed to do? You continue. You continue. You don't quit because of lack of manifestation. There are big things don't happen in a hurry. I want to establish there are certain things that God wants to do in your life. First, he's working on you. Two, he's getting the people. Who are ready. Three, he's going to perfect the timing. And when people don't understand this, they quickly said, I'm a failure. They quickly said, oh, nothing has worked in my life. Also getting the, the people ready. Then he's also getting the right situation ready that at that season, everything will just accelerate. The right people at the right place at the right time and things just start happening. You know why? He took time to get you ready. He took time to get them ready. And then the right situation. And this is what most people don't understand. This is why you can't compare yourself to others. You have to allow the Spirit of God to prepare you for where he's taking you to. Where God is taking you to is greater than what you can ever imagine. I'm telling you, where God is taking you to, what God wants you to experience is greater. So continue in the knowledge of his word, no matter what the situation is. Let's look at Hebrews chapter, or Hebrews chapter 6. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Hebrews chapter 6, I'd like us to look at verse 12. Hebrews 6 verse 12. Thank you, Father. In Hebrews 6 verse 12. Now, I'd like us to take it from verse 11 for the purpose of clarity. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11, it said, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until, unto the end, sorry, unto the end, that ye be not slothful. You know, this is, this is, this is what has affected a lot of people. It said that ye be not what? Slothful. Are there people being slothful? The answer is yes. They are wearied. They are tired. They are frustrated. They are looking at themselves right now and said, this is not working. That is not working. They are bad mouthing. Oh my God. Have you ever heard some people talk before? And then you wonder what the problem is. They are looking and saying, oh, this is not working. That is not even working. This is not working. That, hey, your mouth is the reason why it's not working. For people who speak that way, their mouth is the reason why it's not working because their words are against what God is about to do. They are not speaking right. And look at what he said, be not slothful. He said here, he said, that ye be not slothful. Don't be slothful. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So faith and patience is required when it comes to receiving the inheritance. Faith and patience. And if your faith lacks patience, you can't receive. Because you've been in a hurry to jump out of the process. And then you're thinking that God is not a good God. You know sometimes God will keep a person said, I want you to stay here. I want you to stay here. He told her. Oh, I want you to stay here. And they said, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I don't really like this place. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like this. Only for them to walk out and go and die. I've seen those kind of things. Though. 
We have seen those kind of things happen to people. God told them, sit down. You know, sometimes when God asks you to stay in for the benefit of the places for your benefit. If God asks you to do something, sometimes not for the benefit of who you're doing it for, it's for your own benefit. But lack of knowledge of his will has caused so much pain and damage in the lives of so many people. When I look at some people, I, I wish, you know, I was sharing with someone on Sunday, I said, I wish I could be able to, to share my life with you in the sense that I'm able to take what God has put in me and just transfer like that. It will touch you, just turn him for just put it in you because you'll be able to learn how to be led by the Holy Ghost and flow. But that is not going to happen. I can only teach, but I can't do that. I can only teach, but I can't do that. Because when it comes to the things of the Spirit, you decide what you receive. And you decide what you want to become. And you decide how you want to shape your future. And look at what he said. They said, don't be slothful. There are those who are slothful. They are getting tired. God gave them a word five years ago. But look at what is happening. Eh? I've been praying. Oh, I've been fasting. I've been sowing seed. Ah, me too. I sow seed now. <laughs> like today he told me, double your offering. Double it. That's what he told me. I said, go help me. <laughs> I started praying for myself. I said, God, help me. He said, double your offering. Double your offering. So sometimes you want to rise and then he tell you what to do. Sometimes you want to increase and God is telling you what to do. And let me say this to you. If we're not developing a sensitive heart, there is what is called a sensitive heart. Training your heart to be sensitive to the voice of God. Training your spirit man to be sensitive to the voice of God. That you're quick to know that the times are changing, the seasons are changing, and God is asking you to do something. But if you don't train your heart to be sensitive, the person becomes lukewarm. If a person does not train their heart to be, when I talk about heart, I'm talking about the human spirit. When I talk about the heart, I'm talking about the human spirit. I'm talking about the heart that pumps the blood. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the human spirit. A man is a spirit, he has a soul, he lives in the body. The day you got born again, your spirit was recreated. Your spirit is an eternal spirit. The spirit man is what is an eternal spirit. Man is an eternal spirit. That's the right word. Man is an eternal spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the body. So your spirit man can be trained with God's word. As you can be sensitive to the things of the spirit. You can be... A person can walk into a and go say, Sit down there. Stay here. Do this. Do that. But if you have a religious mindset... I'm doing a teaching right now in the School of Prophets and when, what is called the Section 4 right now. And they are all on YouTube. And one of the things I was sharing with people and I said, listen, if you want, if God has called you to be a prophet, he's not expecting you to do your agenda. He's expecting you to do his will. And in doing his will, that simply means you have to be in submission to his word. In First Kings 13, we read about the man of God from Judah. Remember what happened to him? And the old prophets heard about the exploit and asked him to send, went after him and said, God asked me to tell you to come to the house. And the other man returned back. No man, he didn't return back. He lost his life. He lost his life. God has spoken to him, but he didn't train his spirit to understand when God have, is not changing what he heard. So sometimes God can give you a word and someone else comes to change that word you heard from God. You don't quickly pull into it except God is changing it with you. Or your spirit is bearing a witness that what you're hearing is of God. But if your spirit man is not trained with God's word, you can't truly really be a witness. You can't connect with it. There are things that God wants to do in our lives, but we, we can't get it in the natural. In the natural, if you think that by the natural, you can get something, you can get it. You got to train your spirit man to be able to receive from God that this is the direction of God for my life. This is where God is taking me to. This is what God is calling me to do. This is what God is calling me to do in this season. And can I say this to us? That when people lack the knowledge of his will, they hurt themselves. They will hurt themselves. And that man of God died. He never made it. The lion came. But the old prophet did not just die like that. You remember what happened? The old prophet went back. Carried him. I said, this is the man of God. <laughs> and can I say this to us? If you train your spirit man with God's word, it will be your guide in the dark trouble. It will be your guide. You can sense when evil is ahead. 
You can sense when something wants to go wrong. You can sense when something is not going right. In your spirit, you can pick it that something is going wrong. But you can't pick it if you don't train your spirit. And nobody's going to do that for you. This is why the Bible said, don't be conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may be able to know what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. I can't know what is the perfect will of God, except my mind is consistently renewed with God's word. This is how you grow. This is how you make progress. And in Hebrews chapter 6, look at what he said in verse 12. He said, that ye be not slots for, but followers of them, followers of them. Who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Will this be one of the major challenges we have in church today? The answer is yes. A lot of Christians are looking for quick fix. They don't understand that the promise of God works with faith and patience. The promise of God works with us with faith and patience. I've seen people who could have gotten the medical help. And maybe, you know, some people think that everybody's faith is not at the same level of operation. Everyone's faith is not at the same level of what? Operation. Yes. If someone is sick and he goes to the hospital, he didn't do what is wrong. He did the right thing. Everybody's faith is not at the same level. And there are those that will be sick and they will lay their hands on themselves and they will recover. Hallelujah. But someone else may try it and nothing happened. doesn't mean that God is not hearing them. It may simply means that they may need help. But some people, their faith have not risen to that point. But they are trying to exercise their faith in the area of healing. And you see them in the past, they died. There are people you look at them and say, go to the doctor. They are believing God for healing, but they don't have the faith to receive the healing. They don't have the faith. They have not been raised to be able to receive that healing. They are depending on someone's testimony. You can't depend on the testimonies of others. You have to develop your faith to receive from God. That was why I say, he that cometh to God must believe. Not they that cometh. He say, he, who, he that cometh. So it's a person is talking to he that cometh to God must believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So there has to be a connection there. If there is no connection, there is no progress. And look at what he said here in the Hebrews of the 6 verse 12. He said, that ye be not slothful. That ye, that ye, that ye be not slothful of them, uh, so be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Verse 13 said, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swear by himself. God swear by himself. He swear by himself. Can I say this to you gospel? The knowledge of his word gets you ready to do his will. And the knowledge of his word helps you to stay in his will. Helps you to do his will. Helps you to stay in his will. And helps you to fulfill his will for your life. The knowledge of his word. Now, I'd like us to look at Ephesians chapter 1. Praise God. Pray in the answer. Whenever you're dealing with any situation, the first thing is to know what God's word teach about it. Number two is to continue in what God's word teach about it. Number three is to praise him. While you're applying the word of God and you're doing what you're expected to do, and maybe in the natural it look like there is no answer, nothing is happening. But you stay there. You stay there until there is a manifestation of what God has spoken to you until there is a manifestation of what he has said to you in Ephesians chapter 1 and like us to read verse 3. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. You know, this is the kind of mentality that God wants us to approach him in the place of prayer. The mentality that we are blessed. Are you blessed? Huh? Are you blessed? So that's the kind of mentality that God wants to approach him in the place of prayer. I am blessed. And because I'm blessed, all things are possible. Because I'm blessed, the doors are going to open. Because I'm blessed, I'm going to walk in supernatural increase. Discouragement sometimes is as a result of lack of understanding of his will for us. Sometimes it can also be 
as a result of our, of our inability to stand on his word. And then we'll feel like I'm discouraged. What I'm doing, I'm not seeing fruit. When you're not seeing fruit, don't quit. Especially if you're doing the word. Because there are external forces that are trying to contain with your faith. That are trying to resist the manifestation of what God wants you to experience. This is what so many people don't know. You're speaking the word of God. You're doing the word of God. And then there is this limitation before you. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep going in the knowledge of that word and that will keep you in the path of victory and dominion. So he said here, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Has he blessed us? With all spiritual blessings. All the spiritual blessings required for our future is already in place. All the spiritual blessings. I have what it takes to win in life. I have what it takes to break first. I have what it takes to produce the God kind of result. I have what it takes to win in life. I have what it takes to stay focused on his will. Because God has blessed me with all spiritual blessings. I have all sp- So when we go to the place of prayer. And with this knowledge that I have all spiritual blessings. Then my faith is already at work. I know what get what I came for. I know that this healing is possible. I know that this financial harvest I'm expecting is possible. I know that the increase I'm trusting God for is possible. Because I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings. And look at what he said here in verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you. He's always a giver. God is a giver. God is a generous giver. May give unto you. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Do you know why you need this? You need this to enjoy what you already have in Christ Jesus. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom. Now, can I say this to us? Right decision can determine how we accelerate. And wrong decision can lead to decline. People decline based on wrong decision. But right decision helps us to accelerate, helps us to make progress in the things of the spirit. Right decision. And how do we make that right decision? By the word of God. We make right decision by God's word. And it's said here that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant us with wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Look at verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. This is what we need. This is what we need. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. When your eyes of understanding is enlightened, your hope is restored. Your hope is secured. The eyes of your understanding. Because if the eyes of your understanding is not enlightened, confusion can distract us. Opposition can conquer us. Limitation can restrict our faith. We'll start losing our confidence. We're no longer believing the way we should believe. Some are getting tired in their walk of faith. Some are losing their focus because they could look at themselves right now that it's like all the promise of God is not coming to pass. What is really happening? Abraham was a man of faith. He waited for 25 years. He was a man of faith. Uh, yeah, by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, praise God. God caught a covenant with that man. And he gave him a word. I've made it a father of many nations. In the natural, it doesn't look like it. But it took years for him to see the manifestation of what God has spoken. What am I trying to say in a nutshell is this. If you are walking by faith, stop giving yourself suggestions. What I mean by this is that some people begin to suggest to themselves, well, if God is not going to show up, let me try this. And God have told you to focus on this. Then they start giving themselves suggestions. That was what happened for Sarah to bring in that girl in. Suggestions started coming because she couldn't, she, she, she felt like the hope is fading away. She felt like it's not going to come to pass. And most people don't know that when, when they are at the verge of breaking forth, watch my words, breaking forth, that may be the darkest moment of their life. But if they can stay faithful, they will break forth that dark moment. And then they will come into the harvest. But for some people, what they do is that they allow what they go through to subdue them 
and they start losing focus on the experience that God wants them to come into. And can I say this to you? Why he said that? Why he said this here is that that, God, that the eyes of understanding being enlightened because when the eyes of your understanding is being enlightened, you have confidence for continuity. You have confidence to stay. There are things God has spoken to me. I'm not going anywhere because I know it's going to happen. There are things God has spoken to me about ministry. He has told me what he's going to do. So I'm going to patiently follow the process. If God has told you to do, you can go ahead of God. You can only follow him. You can only listen to him. There are things God wants to do in your life and this is why you can't do whatever you want to do. And whenever there is a delay, it's not because God is responsible for it. It may be that God is getting you ready for it. And you may think that, oh, why am I being delayed this way? There are things I thank God for. Uh, many years ago when I, I started ministry because of the way I was teaching, and one of my pastors told me then, like someone, or like a mentor said that, you'll you just explode. And I thank God I didn't explode that way. Maybe I could have passed that plan. Because there are things that God started teaching me and showing me, I don't really know. I'm telling you. I don't really know. Then he's showing me things to do. Why do you think he took time to raise Moses? That's why people will go up and then they come down. Why did they, they rise and they come down? Why? Because most of them never went through the process. They were running from the process and then they promoted themselves. And when they got to the top, what happened? They came down. Because they never went through the process. And look at this place. He said, that he said the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. This is so important. Because when the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, how you look at things will change. Your response to what situation will change. A new belief system will emerge. And this belief system is consistent with who you are in Christ. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Being what? Being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The eyes of your understanding. Understanding. You know in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 and the, a portion there it said in all you're getting. One of the lines there said in all you're getting. It said get understanding. Why understanding? There are things you cannot interpret except you have understanding. There are things you cannot do except you have In all you're getting, get understanding. Understanding is not based on age. Understanding comes by the Spirit. I said understanding is not based on how old you are. Somebody can be 40 years old, 50 years old, but they don't have understanding. The way they talk, the things they do, you know that this guy lacks understanding. No, this lady lacks understanding. So, understanding is not based on how old you are. Understanding is a supply of the spirit that empowers us to excel in the direction of the will of God. That was why Paul was praying that prayer for them that God will grant them the spirit of understanding. He said the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know. He wants them to know. Know what? To know about inheritance. He wants us to pray from the knowledge of the inheritance. I like us to look at Christ, Second Peter. Sorry, in Second Peter chapter one. Thank you, colleagues. In Second Peter chapter one, I like us to read from verse two to three. It said, Second Peter chapter one, from verse two to three. It said, "Grace and peace be multiply unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord." Grace and peace be multiplied. How does grace and peace multiply? Through the knowledge. Can someone say through the knowledge? Through the knowledge. So we need knowledge of his will for grace and peace to multiply. He said grace and peace multiply to, to you through the knowledge. He said grace and peace multiply unto you through the knowledge of God. So having the knowledge of God will increase the manifestation of grace and peace. And these are basic pillars for your future. Grace. In Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Talking about it said, God, 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 that God will make all grace abound towards you. That you're always having all sufficiency. You're always having. Always having. Not lacking. Not struggling. 
You are always having. How will I always have? Because grace. Grace is more than an unmerited favor. It's one of the definitions. But grace is the person of Jesus. It's more than unmerited favor. Yes, it's one of the definitions of grace. But that is not the totality of grace. So can we say that grace is God empowering you to function in his will? Grace is God empowerment as you can live the God life. Grace is God exonerating you from a life of sin. Of, of sin. Grace is God exonerating us from a life of sin. What well, we could have still been in sin today if not for the grace of God. So there is more to grace than saying that grace is an unmerited favor. That is one of the definitions, but not the totality of the definition of grace. There is more to the grace of God. There is more to the grace of God. There are things we cannot do except by grace. There are things we can achieve. There are places we can go except by the grace of God. Say grace and peace multiply to you. And look at verse 3 said, according as his divine power had given unto us all things. So this is why when you want to pray, you need to understand you have it already. You have it already. Go to the place of prayer with the mentality of what? I have it already. It is possible. It is possible. Don't pray this way. Oh God, if it is your will, let me have it. You can't pray that way. Abundance is the will of God. Peace is the will of God. Joy is the will of God. Increase is the will of God. You don't pray this kind of prayer. Oh God, if it is your will, heal me. No, in, 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 in the finished work of Jesus, we have healing already. So what would we do? We take our healing. We exercise our, we, we take our healing by faith. By faith, I receive my healing. By faith, I do what? I receive my healing. He said, yeah, he has given us all things. Have God given us all things? Now pertain unto life and godliness. But there is someone right now crying and saying, oh God, you're forsaking me. Oh God, no, God did not forsake you. Developing your faith will lead to your confidence. One of the ways you become a person who is going to be confident in the place of prayer is when your faith is developed. If your faith is not developed, you can't be confident in the place of prayer. You've not been praying according to his word. You've been praying according to your feeling. And sometimes your feeling is not the best place to pray from. I say your feeling is not the best place to pray from. The best place to pray from but to pray from is by the knowledge of his will. The knowledge of his will. I'd like us to look at John Gospel chapter 8 and then we'll begin to round up. We're teaching on praying the answer. The word of God is the answer. What is the answer? The word of God is the answer. God's word is the answer. In, in John Gospel chapter 8, I'd like to look at from verse 30. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In John Gospel chapter 8 from verse 30, he said this. As he spake these words, many believed on him. As he spake this word, many believed on him. Now the question here is, how many of you believe when you hear God's word? As he spake, many believed on him. Now we what we believe. I said we receive what we believe. We become what we believe. We manifest what we believe. It is what we believe that makes all the difference. We receive what we believe. Whatever we believe is what we're going to receive. You know some people, what they believe is not helping them. What do you believe? In Luke chapter 1 verse 45, he said, Blessed is she that believe there will be performance of these things told out from the Lord. Blessed is she that believe. Those blind men came to Jesus and uh, they were asking for their healing. He said, do you believe I'm able to do this? He came for healing. He said, do you believe I'm able to do this? Do you believe I'm able to do this? That was why he said you should come to the throne of grace with what? With boldness. That boldness also is connected to your belief system. Come to the throne with boldness. You have to believe to be bold. So when you're praying, believe. When you're praying, trust God. When you're praying, know that he's answering Mark 11. I think I'm trying to round up. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Wait, before you go to Mark 11, sorry. Let me, let me exhaust this. Verse 32. Mark 11, verse 30. Sorry, John 
chapter what? That's good. John chapter 8, verse 32. Look at this. He said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You will know. Ye shall know the truth. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So there is a liberty that comes to us when we know the truth. And let me say this to you. It is the application of that truth that leads to transformation. The application of the truth is what leads to transformation. You want to see transformation? The application of the truth is what leads to transformation. The application of truth is what leads to transformation. So I cannot be transformed without the knowledge of his word being applied. You know, some people think that God will do the word for them. No, you're going to do the word for yourself. You're the one going to do the word for yourself like to look at this scripture here. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Mark 11 verse 24. In Mark 11 24 it says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. And that prayer should come from the knowledge of the word, like we've been teaching here. When you pray, do what? Believe. So if a person is praying and without believing, what is he doing? What are they doing? They are not establishing the root for manifestation of their desire. If you're praying and you're not believing, you're wasting your time. If you're praying and you're not believing, so when you pray, do what? You believe. He said, therefore I say unto you that the worst thing soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. So how are we going to have them? We'll pray, we'll believe. We'll pray, we'll do what? We'll believe. That will have received them. And then you will have them. So manifestation is rooted in faith. Oh, this is a faith expression. Manifestation is rooted in faith. Manifestation is rooted in faith. Every day I walk on my faith. And how do I do that? I do that by reading God's word. I do that by meditating on God's word. Every day. I have to walk on my faith. Consciously, I wake up to read the Bible. Not because I have to teach, not because I have to preach, but because I need to help myself. I wake up every day to read my Bible, maybe to read some relevant materials I needed to study things I need to read, to read the Word of God. Because if you're not in the Word, you'll be out of faith. Your faith cannot be affected. If you're the word equals faith. No word, no faith. No word, no faith. The more you take, rise. Your faith begins to rise. The word equals faith. And most people don't know this. They are complaining about what they are going through. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. The word equals faith. What equals faith? The word. The word equals faith. Hallelujah. The word of God equals faith. It's a faith coming by hearing. So the more you listen to the word of God over and over, something begins to happen in your spirit. Something happens in your spirit. As you hear it, your hope will rise. Strength will come. Goodness will come. Expectation that you thought would never come to pass will suddenly come, uh, come to life. And now you're seeing possibility. Now you can say to yourself, I'll finish this journey. Listen, I've started, I'll finish it. Philippians 1 verse 6 coming to your mind. He who has begun a good work in me. You're thinking that. You're projecting the scriptures. You're walking the word. You're walking it. I've seen people who literally change their life by the application of God's word. Someone was sharing a testimony with me this evening and talking about how she was watching Finish Work TV and uh, how her life has been transformed. How her life has completely been changed. Her life has completely been, he said, the teachings I heard. You know, God's word comes with power. What people hear, God's word comes with power. You're listening to it. This service will be over. It will be available on YouTube. It's going to be available on Facebook, on different platform, on the scopes. It's going to be available on Facebook TV. So you look for channels to, opportunity to hear it over and over. You know why? The more you do that, your faith is rising. You're getting stronger. You're becoming strong. When others are quitting, you're moving forward. When others don't know what to do, you know what to do. I don't know how to be discouraged. I'm sorry to say this. I don't know how to give up. 
I don't know how to quit. I don't know how to stop. I don't know how. I was telling someone, some of my team members, I said, for me to be discouraged, I have to be thought about it. For me to be discouraged, they have to not teach me. Say, Pastor, you need to take class on how to be discouraged. 101 discouragement. And we're bringing you a professor. <laughs> we're going to bring you someone that will teach you how to be discouraged. We're going to bring you some. You know why? The more you get into the word of God, you're far from discouragement. The more you get into the word of God, you're far from fear. The more you get into the word of God, you're far from anxiety. The more your roots get deep and you don't get worried about the things people get worried about. I don't know how to wake up at midnight and think about, hey, what am I going to do about my wife, my children, my family, my ministry, whatever I'm doing. I don't know how to do that. I don't wake up thinking, how will the money come from? I will sleep like a baby. Sometimes I sleep before my family. You know why? The more you have the word of God, the more your peace increases. He said peace and, not, and grace will increase by what? By the knowledge of his word. But when you see yourself, you're always awake. It's because you're not awake in the world. Then something else is waking you up. The more you get into the word of God, the more the pressure will drop. This pressure that you're battling with right now, that is, some people are having BP right now. High blood pressure. The pressure. The pressure for family, for children. Let me say this to you. When the son said, the Lord is my shepherd. It's not just the son is the only thing that said it to me. Me too, I said it the other he said it, then I have a revelation about this. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. It looks simple, but it will help you. I'm telling you. That's your capsule. That's your capsule. You take it. You wake up in the morning. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It may look like, well, what is it? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want again this morning. I think I told you a story. I was talking to my friend today. <laughs> when we were investing. In our final year, <laughs> this is my friend. He's a funny guy. He will, we are going for exam. He will bring out his powder. He will start rubbing on his face and he will be combing his head. You know what he's going to say? I'm above my contemporaries. I'm above my contemporaries. I'm his friend. I'm standing by him. He's saying that he's above. That means me too that is his contemporary is above me. He's combing his head. He came out with the best result in my department. Eh? Eh? Yes, he was speaking to his life. He came out with the best result in my department. He was, come, I'm above my contemporary because I have done righteousness. Huh? Remember that scripture? Um, he has anointed me with the oil of what? Gladness. So I'm above my contemporaries. You know, he, he, he'll be saying that. And I'll be hearing him. This incident happened many years ago. He'll be saying that. I'll be hearing him. He'll be saying it. It's the word of God. <laughs> the word doesn't work for you because you're holding the Bible. The word works for you because it's leaving your mouth coming out. <laughs> Not because they're holding the work. The word works for you because you're saying it. You get what you say. You get what you say. You get what you say. Your future is looking like your words. Huh? If, how many of you want to see your photograph of your future? Come on. The photograph of your future comes out of you daily or knowing to you. So if you want to know where you're going to end in the next 20 years, in the next 30 years, then you watch what is coming out of you. And whatever that is coming out of you is the photograph of your future. If there are words of depression, if there are words of fear, if there are words of low self-esteem, that's what is going to happen. But if you wake up and you say, the Lord is my shepherd, then you speak like David in Psalm 27. And begin to make those declarations. Then expect miracles to happen. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You take your offering, you give it. You begin to believe God. Believe God that, Lord, in this season, my finances will increase. My giving will increase. I'm not going to stay at the same level of giving. No way. The way you plan to build house, buy cars, the same way you have to plan to give. Hallelujah. You have to believe God to grow in your giving. You can't stay in the same spot of giving for five years, for three years, for two years. No way. No way. No way. You can't stay there. You consciously plan what to give. You begin to pray. Say, Lord, you give that seed to the sower. Huh? You give that what? Seed to the sower. I receive seed to sow. I receive seed to sow. You give that seed to the sower. I receive seed to sow. In the name, it's a serious prayer. In the name of Jesus, I receive seed to sow because as you're sowing, you're sowing yourself out. You're sowing your way out of that lack out of that struggle. There is something about 
bringing seed before God and offering before God. A friend shared something with me many years ago. I would not forget. He said, he went to a meeting and then he saw a man that came for the meeting. But you know the man. And the man was carrying this large envelope. And this large, very large envelope was full of money. And the guy was carrying it on his chest like this. And, and I asked him, what is that? He said, that is his offering. Wow. And I told the guy that, that I couldn't write check, but I can bring you offering like this. That man has consciously seen himself in that realm. Unknowing to most, of, most people, their habit towards giving is not helping their rising. They have conditioned themselves that this is what I can give. This is what I can afford. But can you begin to take a step? Maybe you're giving like $100. Can you begin to take a step and give $100, $110? Huh? Can you begin to, maybe you're giving 500 naira in the service and you begin to take a step and give 600 naira? You're, you're, you're stretching your faith. And before you realize that level will become a normal level. I, I, you get what I'm saying right now? It will become a normal level. You're growing. You're getting better. And before unless your provision will increase. I've noticed that. Your provision increases as your giving increase. Whether you believe it or not, that's the principle. Your provision increase as your giving increase. So work at your giving. Work at your offering. Work at it. Don't look at it as something you just do. Okay, let me just drop this. Okay, let me just give whatever. You can't just do that. You consciously prepare. Prepare from home. You pray about it. You say, Lord, I thank you for this thing I'll be giving today. I give you the praise. You consciously prepare your giving. You don't come into the building. And then that is when you, okay, what do I give? What do I give? Well, from, from the service, you're driving, coming. You're, you're walking down to church on the, you say, Holy Spirit, what do I give in the service? And when we learn to listen to the Spirit, our increase will know no limits. I like us to rise to our feet and pray in the Holy Ghost. Masha Katanababa. Rekaraba Seketoli Kamba. Rande de Bosha Kamba. Re Tolo Bosha Katanabra de Seketoli Baba. Rendo de Bosha Ketoli Kamba Baba. Rekado Seketoli Kaparado Seketoli Baba. Rendo de Bosha Katalibra de Seketoli Baba. Rando de Bosha Ketoli Bra de Seke Baba. Rekaraba Seketoli Kamba Baba. Rekondo Lobo Seketoli Baba. I receive by the Spirit. Rekaraba Sababa. Rendo Sakamba. Rendo Sakamba. Rendo de Bosha Kamba. Thank you, Holy Ghost. La Karababa. Rando Dobo Sakaraba Seketoli Baba. Rando Seketoli Kambarababa. Rikondo Dobo Sakarababa. Rindo Dobo Seketoli Baba Baba. Rinda Dabba Seketoli Bla Katanababa. Rikoto Lobo Seketoli Baba Baba Rabba Baba. Rikaraba Seketoli Bla Kababa. Holy Ghost, have your way. Rande Seketoli Kapradi Baba. Rindo Seketoli Brade Seketoli Baba. Rikababa, it's time to pray the word. It's time to pray the word. Likaraba seke baba ba. Randre seke to lika baba ba. Rikondo robo shaka baba ba. Rinde de de bo shaka talibra kaba ba. We pray the word. Likaraba seke to lima ba. Randre seke to lika baba ba ba. Rikaraba seke to lika bara de seke baba ba. Randre seke to lika bara ba seke to lima ba. Rando de de bo seke to lima baba ba. Rakapra de seke to lika da da ba seke de baba. Rikanda de de bo seke to lima ka baba baba. Rakanda de bo seke to lima da baba baba. Randre de seke to lima ka da ra baba baba. Rekede de ba sa ka baba baba. It's time to grow. It's time to grow. It's time to get better. It's time to increase. It's time to improve in the things of the spirit. Man kola barando sekere baba. Raka la ba sekele baba baba. Reko lo bo saka la baba baba baba. Raka la ba sekele baba baba baba. Reka la ba sekele baba 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 baba. Rande de de ba sekele baba 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 baba. Reka la ba sekele de baba 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 baba. Reka la ba sekele baba 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 baba. Reka la ba sekele baba 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 baba. Man kro de bo sekere baba 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 baba. Reka la ba 
Lord, we thank you. In your giving, I am an aggressive giver. I'm an aggressive giver. I'm an aggressive giver. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Rando We win by praying the Holy Ghost. We win by praying in the Spirit. We win by praying in the Spirit. Thank you, Father. All things are possible. Miracles are possible. Healing is possible. All things are possible. Believe God in this season. Expect miracles in this season. Expect increase in this season. Expect the doors to be open in this season. Run this Thank you, Holy Ghost. There is so much energy we release when we pray in the Holy Ghost. There is so much strength to release as we pray in the Spirit. May knowledge come into your heart. May understanding come into your heart. May you receive insight to know what to do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you are watching this broadcast or maybe you're in this place tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The greatest thing we can ever do with our life is to come to Jesus. The greatest thing we can do with our life is to come to the knowledge of his word. And the knowledge of his word brings peace. It brings life. It brings joy. And if you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'd like you to repeat this after me. Lord Jesus. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart. That God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with us, it means you're born again. And the Holy Ghost is going to help you from this day forward. We want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. When you subscribe, you have opportunity to watch a playlist uh, of various teachings we have done that will help your leadership on business and ministry in relationship. I like you to. Go to our YouTube channel, Faith Man Teaching, more than 8,400 videos on YouTube. And they are trending. Every day people are watching. And I, I want to let you understand that God's word has life. We also want to encourage you to stay with Finish Work TV. Uh, it's 24-7 every day. And you can watch from anywhere around the world to receive life-changing teachings of God's word. We have a page on video on demand where you can watch teachings on demand as you want it. It's there. On finishworktv.com and also want to encourage you to get our new book on Amazon. It's 40 things you need to know about your future by Faith Man of Weather. 40 things you need to know about your future. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't have a local church, or maybe you're watching from Asia, from the Middle East, wherever you're watching, and you don't have a local church, we'd like to invite you to Zoom Church on Sunday. It's going to be by 10, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 a.m. Central Time. You can connect with us by going to the Play Store to download the Zoom app or to go to iTunes to pick up the Zoom app. When you do that, you can log in with us and your life will not remain the same. For partnership, you can sow your seed through PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Until our next broadcast, please don't even forget this. There is greatness in you.